Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the special council meeting for Monday, May 14th, 2018. I want to first off uh, say that we're going to be having a scheduled recess at 9 p.m. And I want to recognize that we're on the t holding this meeting on the traditional territory of the Sinanimo First Nations people. Before we get started, I'm going to read a statement. It might seem a little long, but it needs to be, uh, it needs to be clearly enunciated. And that is guidelines on council meeting decorum. Council, the chair, CAO, and city clerk each have roles and responsibilities at public meetings. Specifically, the mayor, or acting mayor, as chair, has the authority to do and duty to take all measures necessary to ensure meetings comply with the community charter, council procedure law, uh, by law, and workplace laws. Council meetings are open to the public and are both a political and democratic forum, as well as a workplace. Council duties are to ensure that members of the public have a reasonable opportunity to express their views or concerns. Proper rules of order are, one, only one speaker at a time will have the floor, as directed by the chair of the meeting. Please do not interrupt or call out comments while another has the floor. Anyone speaking out without having been acknowledged by the chair will be found out of order. If that person does not refrain from speaking without having been acknowledged by the chair, then he or she shall be required to leave. Two, for the members of the, public, of the public speaking, the comments need to be respectful and constructive. Discriminatory or defamatory comments or comments that are in a nature of harassment will not be tolerated and anyone engaging in such communications will be found out of order. If a speaker is found to be out of order and does not refrain from that commentary, then that speaker will be required to leave. This is a public hearing, so all comments can be considered publication. First off, with respect to harassment, in terms of comments about city employees, employees of the city of Nanaimo have a right not to be subjected to discriminatory or defamatory comments or personal attacks against their competency or character. All speakers must refrain from such comments about identifiable staff. Comments should be limited to issues regarding the city's policy or op operations. Secondly, discriminatory comments. Section 7 of the Human Rights Code prohibits a discriminatory publication because of the race, color, ancestry, place of origin, religion, marital status, family status, physical or mental disability, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, or age. Discriminatory comments will not be tolerated. And finally, defamation is a publication about a person that tends to hurt the person's reputation, Defamatory comments will not be tolerated. Please stick to known facts and keep the dialogue respectful and constructive. And I first want to welcome, we have a fairly crowded gallery tonight, I want to welcome uh, Mr. McDowell and the grade five students from Departure Bay Elementary School. Good evening, welcome. Introduction of late items, Ms. Curry, please. Thank you, Worship. On the addendum this evening, we are adding finance and audit committee recommendations from May 9th, 2018, that's agenda item 8B, and we're removing agenda item 10D, water metering policy. And that's it, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion for the adoption of the agenda? Councillor Fuller. Yeah, actually I wanted to add Bill Manners as a delegation for 11A. You're too fast for me. Delegation, Mr. Bill Manners, 11A. Yeah, cameras in taxi cabs. Okay, is there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Armstrong. Discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. So, we have a motion for the adoption of the agenda as amended. So moved. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Thorpe, moved by Councillor Armstrong. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Can we have a motion for the adoption of the minutes of April 23rd, please? So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor uh, Thorpe, seconded by Councillor Hong. Any errors or omissions? I had one minor amendment that I had mentioned to Ms. Gurry today, and uh, uh, it will be adjusted accordingly. Ms. Gurry, did you want to say something? No, Your Worship. Um, yes, we noted that there was an error in um, your absence of the chair and the taking over from Acting Chair Cheryl Armstrong, so we'll correct those times. Thank you very much. So it's been moved and seconded. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next item under presentations. We have a delegation from the Grade 5 class of Departure Bay Elementary School. So the Grade 5 students from Departure Bay Elementary School, led by Mr. McDowell, 
to, will provide a presentation regarding playgrounds for the Port Drive Waterfront Development Plan and the importance of playgrounds. Please come forward. Hi, my name is Luna. My name is Nora. And my name is Clara. We are grade four or five students from Departure Bay Eco School. We know you have been developing a playground and we have been doing some research and we are presenting to you. Purpose of a playground. One, giving children a place to play. Two, physical and social development. Three, linking children to nature. Four, safe and open space for fun. Creating community. Six, getting children outside. We have also been doing some research about natural playgrounds. One, there is a movement to swap swings, slides, and monkey bars for boulders, grassy hills, and trees. Two, five elements of natural playgrounds, rolling hills, boulders, logs, pathways, and large trees. Three, natural playgrounds have the most challenging environment. It has challenges for all children, all ages, all sizes. Four, natural playgrounds are more environmentally friendly. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Does council have any questions for the delegation? Oh, they're not there's finished more. yet. Oh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luna, Nora, and Clara. Hi, my name is Elle. And my name is Kira. And my name is Sophia. We are telling you about the results of the survey we did in high school. We surveyed around 200 kids. Number one, how often do you use playgrounds? Every day, 40%, once a week, 22%. Number two, what is your favorite playground equipment? Swings, 28%, climbing structures, 28%, monkey bars, 22%. Three, what mater material would you prefer for equipment? Metal, 40%, wood, 23%, plastic, 8%. Number four, what would you like for the playground in the, what would you like for the ground in the playground? Rubber, 63%, sand, 18%. Where would you rather like to play? Playground, 31%, forest, 30%, beach, 22%. Number six, do you like spinning playground equipment? Yes, 149 people know 41. We don't have a poster for this one, but number seven. Do you think zip lines are s suitable for playgrounds? Yes, 155, no, 22. <laughs> number eight, what water features would be good in the playground? Small water park, 43%. Mini river with hand pump, 28%. <coughs> Do you think music or sound equipment would be good in the playground? Yes. 122, no, 58. Number 10, would you like to see First Nations art in the playground? Yes, 140 people, no, 40. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ethan. Um, we surveyed almost 200 students at Departure Bay Elementary School. These are our interesting finds. 62% of children at Departure Bay Elementary School use playgrounds at least once or every day per a week. Swings and climbing structures are students' favorite playground equipment. While most choose metal as the type of equipment, they, like 43%, choose wood. A vast majority of prefer rubber flooring for a playground. 
Very interesting is that equal amount of children would pick a forest or a playground to play in. This might be good evidence for building more natural playgrounds. A great number want water features in their playground. Hi, my name is Kaylin. My name is Sophia again. <laughs> and my name is Clara again. And we are presenting to you our idea of a playground. This is the inside front. This is our idea of a playground in the, the front and the back and the outside of the area. Here we have a like little water diverter. You, there's, if you want, you can come here and try to divert the water. Here we have slides, monkey bars, spider web, the the First Nations fish art, and more First Nations art right here. have a little door, um, a barnyard door that you can push. And the scarf you can twirl around up here. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time. Thank you. Don't, don't run away. Don't run away. There may be questions for you. Are there any questions? <laughs> Councilor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll go first. Um, and I do have a question, but before I get to that, I, I just want to say how impressed I was with the presentation of all of the students from Departure Bay Elementary. You did an excellent job. You might not know that I used to be a grade four or five teacher myself, and I think it's wonderful that students of your age have the confidence to come and speak to us here at Council and, and express yourself so clearly. So I want to congratulate you, and I certainly want to congratulate Mr. McDowell for his work in teaching public speaking and public confidence. Good, good for you. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment on is, and I don't know if you're aware, but down at Maffeo Sutton Park, right down by the lagoon at the waterfront, there is a playground, and it's quite an old playground. And the city is right now considering uh, renovating and improving that playground. So I was very interested in your ideas, especially relating to a natural type of playground. That sounds very interesting. And I'm certainly going to keep those comments in mind as we improve our playground down at the park. The other thing that I need to tell you is that uh, we are going to be starting up again, I hope fairly soon this summer, the zip line that uh, will go across the lagoon at Maffeo Sutton Park. And that was part of your presentation, so you might be interested in that and watch for that as an opportunity to play on the zip line or experience the zip line in future. Uh, now, my question is not directly about your presentation, but you were introduced as Departure Bay Eco School. And does that mean that your school um, has more of a focus on ecology and the natural world, or could you just, could somebody explain to me what that means? I'm sure you can. <laughs> there you go. Um, we, we study in eco to make our environments better near the school. So it has to do with our natural environment and the world around us and the ecology. We spend a lot of time outside, too. Well, lucky you. <laughs> yes? Sometimes we even do beach cleanups, and we go down to the forest and explore the nature. Well, that's wonderful. And you're lucky that your school is so close to Departure Bay Beach, which is a beautiful area. Mr. McDowell, anything that you could add? No, no, it's, uh, it's a real privilege to be able to speak uh, in front of council and mayor. Um, this was kind of born out of uh, what your, your plans for um, the waterfront, the um, port drive there. Yes. And uh, we're also it sort of fit into direct democracy, which uh, was a unit that we did in the classroom. 
So it all sort of really worked well because you know, playgrounds are, of course, very interesting for children and a chance to explore democracy is also uh, very important. So thank you again for this. Thank you, and I'm sure there's other questions, but I really appreciate your students coming tonight and talking to us. And again, great job, a wonderful group of students. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Armstrong. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was excellent. I do have a question. Do you think that you can do natural playgrounds together with more organized playgrounds? Can they, they exist together at the same spot? And how would we do that? Maybe do some of it wood and do some of it more metal and plastic? Okay. And one follow-up, if I may, and that's on accessibility. I really like the fact that you guys looked at rubber because for those that have wheelchairs, it makes it a lot easier. Did you guys look at that for when you were doing your presentation? And what did you find on that? It's a lot smoother for wheelchair people and people that can't walk as well, so they can your wheelchair will slide better than like gravel or? Great, and my final question, if I might, Your Worship, and that is when you we were talking about a zip line, would you want that in a natural setting or would you want that in an organized park? No, we would prefer it in a natural, and a non-natural thing because that just destroys the whole entire vibe, I think. <laughs> Sometimes, I think we should have it going from tree to tree, like have it a little low in the tree and going from one tree to another tree. Well, that's good. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate your time and coming to educate us. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Brennan. Thank you, Your Worship. Oh, first of all, I, I want to thank you for your presentation, just like everyone else has done. Um, well done. You did a great job. I see your classes down at the beach quite quite often because I, I live in the Departure Bay area. My children went to Departure Bay School. And that was before it was an eco school. And I really wish we'd had an eco school because I know they would have liked it and they would have learned a lot. You know what was I thought was really impressive with, with um, your presentation was that you were able to piece together so much stuff. You pieced together mathematics. You had art in there, public speaking, of course. You did a survey, and that demonstrated that you understood what direct democracy was, which is great when you're coming to city council. Um, so I think you know the beauty of an eco school is being able to do all those kinds of things together in, in this project. I heard that there were some kids down at uh, Woodstream Park recently. Did you guys go down there and, and see the fish coming up? Because there are fish coming up the wood stream now. I've seen fish sometimes down there doing, well, laying. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've seen little smolt and. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? But you guys are working with the neighborhood because the Departure Bay Neighborhood Association, they worked very hard on cleaning up that, that stream so that we could all have salmon, but we could all see the salmon coming up and uh, down the river. So thank you for your presentation. Councillor Fuller. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to thank you for coming and presenting to us. It's really great seeing younger people uh, take an interest in things. And what I found most amazing about this, no PowerPoints, <laughs> no technology used except for a microphone to speak. Uh, I love the nature playgrounds. That's what I grew up with. Uh, always had a forest for my backyard. Loved playing it. I'm glad that people are still getting out and doing that and utilizing the more formal playgrounds as well. Great job with the surveys and, and the little boards that showed us the result. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hong. Thank you. I'll make mine quick. And it is actually a question. So thanks for coming forward, guys. So my question really isn't related to your actual project, but I wanted to ask you, are you guys scared or nervous to come up here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, so how was it? Was it as 
nervous as you thought? <laughs> It was very nervous, and it, it took me a lot of strength inside of me to come up here. Great job, though. I just wanted to say that. I felt the same way. I just take deep breaths and try to do it. Great. Thanks, guys, for coming. I, I don't enjoy. Okay. Thank you. So before you go, I've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, number one, have you gone on a field trip to McGurr to see an accessible playground? No, I don't believe we have. Okay. Do you go to Departure Bay a lot? Yes. Okay. So I need somebody in your group to tell everyone out there how you feel about all the cigarette butts all over the walkway at Departure Bay. Do you notice them when you go down there? Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> have, you got, have you got some advice for the people out there at home as to what to do instead of littering? Some people just don't care about the environment and they're too lazy to go to a garbage can and just take the time to put it in the garbage and keep the earth safe and clean. Do you have a message for the people at home? Don't smoke, don't litter. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I see no further questions for you. Congratulations. Very well done. Okay. So the next item is under administration, and it's the advisory committee minutes. Councillor Armstrong. Oh, I move that the minutes of the Community Engagement Task Force meeting held on Tuesday, 2018, March 27th, be adopted. Thank you. Sorry. Moved by Councillor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Any discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. Next one, Committee Recommendations. Public Safety Committee. I move a motion that Council ask staff to inquire into incorporating graffiti proofing requirements and new developments both residential and commercial, within the city by way of an amendment to the building bylaw or other means. Seconded. Hmm. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion. Councillor Hong. Um, thank you. I have concern about this one, mainly because you're not limiting the scope. So if you're asking a residential um, development to graffiti proof a building at whose expense is going to pay for it and what does that do to your paint and to the options of these buildings because it seems very vague for for what the recommendation is so I, I think we've got another item that's coming up uh, coming up later in the agenda with respect to our building bylaw and how it interfaces with the building code. So perhaps you can hold that for then. So then why would this be a motion until that comes up? Shouldn't we well, be deferring ask, this? Well, ask staff to inquire into incorporating gra graffiti proofing requirements. We might, we might in fact get a, uh, uh, an answer tonight. Okay. With Ms. This Curry? Um, Yes, Your Worship, I was just basically going to say almost what you had just said is that I believe the recommendation is just to inquire into incorporating it. So I believe staff will probably come back with what that entails and, and if it was actually possible and what the parameters would be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Brennan? No, thank okay. you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Okay, Finance and Audit Committee recommendations. Acting Mayor would take this one then as the Vice Chair, which would be 8B2, Finance and Audit Committee recommendations. Council direct staff to obtain a legal opinion regarding the release of the human resources 
personnel person that is B, isn't it? I never get this right. Okay. Uh, it was moved and seconded that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council direct staff to work with KPMG auditors to implement recommendations noted as significant control deficiencies named under Appendix A in the report titled 2017 Annual Financial Statements dated uh, 2018 May 09 and bring forward a report to a future Council meeting. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on this one? Councillor Thorpe. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'll certainly support this. Uh, I think I made the motion, but I, I do recall the words um, uh, inquiring into best practice being part of that motion, and I'm sure it's, it's the intent of this wording, but I just want that clarified, please. Ms. Curry. Um, thank you, Worship. So I do recollect that as well, so I can reflect this motion if Council's in favor and okay to that, because it, it should have said best practices in there. I, I remember that as well. So if the motion could be amended and there's agreement by the mover and the seconder that we add best practices um, that to implement best practices. Best practices? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, implement recommendations and best practices uh, and, yeah, in the future, change to best practices. I have the actual wording written down, but I can, I can send it to Council if they wish, but there was best practices noted in there, in there from Councillor Thorpe. Thank, thank you. you. I know that was the intent. And the seconder? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Next one. It was moved and seconded that the Finance and Audit Committee recommend to Council that Council direct staff to obtain a legal opinion regarding the release of human resources personal matters outlined on page 75 in the Finance and Audit meeting agenda dated uh, 2018, March 09, and report back to Council at a future in-camera meeting. Second. Yep. Discussion. Councillor Armstrong. Yeah, I'm going to be voting against this because I don't believe we have the right to uh, look at private personnel files. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hong. Thank you. Um, again, this wasn't about personal files. It was about why that information was put on there for a management report and if it should be put on there or if it should be struck from that report. Huh. From a legal opinion is where I want to know if that statement that I emphasize should be on that report. Thank you. Councillor Brennan. Um, I think that if we are going to ask for some legal opinion, the first thing we better ask is, was this a release of um, human resources personal matters? In my opinion, it was not. So if we ask uh, the lawyer to give us an opinion on something that actually did not occur, then we're kind of wasting our money. I mean, if, if we get a legal opinion back that says, yes, in fact, that was a release of personal um, information, then we could take the next step and say, well, what, would, what are the implications of that? Or, or we ask both those questions to the lawyer. But this one presupposes that it was a release of human resources, personal matters, and I don't believe it was. Thank you. So I won't, I won't support it as, as uh, presented. Okay, are there any first-time speakers? Councillor Hong. Thank you, and again, this was about stating something that we didn't get KPMG to report on. If it's a finding of fact, then we should have that information. I don't think the terms of it was to do that and to discuss those items. And that's the reason why I want to have a legal opinion to look at it to see if KPMG overstepped what they needed to write. That was it. It wasn't against any of their recommendations, is what they wrote. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Show Councillor Brennan, Mayor McKay, Mayor Councillor Thorpe, and Councillor Armstrong opposed. Motion fails. Next one, Councillor Brennan. approve the 2017 
2017 annual financial statement for the City of Nanaimo. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Call the question. Councillor Hong. Thank you. I will not be supporting this motion because of the fact that we don't have a legal opinion stating that those financial statements are correct from our auditor. Thank you. Councillor Fuller. Yeah, I won't support it for the exactly the same reasons. Um, you know, if we don't get that opinion and things go awry, we're culpable, so I won't accept the, the report. You, Councillor Brennan. Yeah, um, I just want to make the point that um, professionally, a lawyer can't, um, can't determine whether uh, an annual financial statement was correct or not. It's not within a, uh, the lawyer's purview. It's it's a, an opinion of a chartered accountant. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. Yeah, I was just going to concur with uh, I concur with Councillor Brennan's points that uh, a legal opinion would not have any merit on this. It, it's a chartered accountant situation. It's got nothing to do with the lawyer. Thank you, Councillor Hong. And again, back to the point where does a chartered accountant have the right to do those things, which is an HR issue? So we're back into the exact same circle. I like to know if they had that ability to write that in the report. That's where my motion got to the first time. And I wanted to see if it, the lawyer says, yeah, they can say that, fine. I don't have a problem with that. But it's better be safe than sorry to check. Thank you. I, Councillor Brennan. Well, in, in that case, I would suggest we deal with this one to um, approve the financial statement. Um, and then um, after that, a motion is made to request a legal opinion uh, as to whether the um, statement made regarding the personnel issue. Um, no, it wasn't. It's a different motion, Jerry. Um, that that question about whether it should have been in there be put to a lawyer. Like, the question is, uh, was this a release of human resources personnel matters? That's the question to put to the lawyer. Okay, so as it stands right now, we're discussing the approval of the financial statement. Right. Okay, so let's call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? So, Councillor Hong and Councillor Fuller opposed. Motion uh, carries. I'd like to make an another motion then. Councillor Brennan? I'd move that um, we direct our uh, lawyer to um, give us an opinion as to whether there was a release of human resources personal matters in the audit, the 2017 financial audit. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Councilor Brennan? No, I mean, that, that's the question we want answered. Oops. That she didn't feel it was from her reading of um, the um, freedom and freedom of information and privacy um, laws, but if if council has some concerns about it, let's find out the answer. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. Again, I don't believe this belongs with the lawyer. I believe it belongs with the the privacy commissioner. It's a privacy commissioner quest, request, and that's where it belongs. A lawyer only has an opinion. The privacy commissioner has the final say. So I would say, if we're concerned about that, I would like the motion amended to that the uh, complaint goes to the privacy commissioner or FOIPA to make a decision as to whether personal information was released. I, I too, uh, share Ms. Gurry's opinion that it was not, but I, I think it belongs with the Privacy Commissioner League. Hey, Thank that, you. That, I mean, I, that's fine with me. Let's change the motion yeah. to reflect that. Just want the eight question answered. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? Show Mayor McKay opposed. That's correct. You did vote yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Next one. Um, Your Worship, do you want me to go through all one, two, three, four of them, or just um, say approve the following? Um, uh, if you can, if you can condense them, that's okay. fine. Okay. Sure. I'll try and do it. Um, there's moved and seconded the Finance and Audit Committee recommend that Council approve the following travel assistance grants. Cedar Community Secondary Senior A Baseball, uh, $50 for uh, one player to attend the um, basketball championships in Ukulet. Um, 
and Vancouver Island University Mariners Volleyball Club in the amount of $350 for seven players to attend the provincial championships and Vancouver Island Special Needs Hockey Association in the amount of $900 for 18 athletes to attend the um, 2018 Adaptive Hockey Challenge in Kelowna and um, the Wellington Secondary School Band in the amount of $600 for six musicians to attend Music Fest Canada Canadian Nationals in Toronto. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. I'll happily support uh, this recommendation, but uh, as I did at the committee level, I just want to point out uh, for the benefit of the public that the Vancouver Island University Mariners Volleyball Club is not the VIU Mariners Volleyball Team. It is a youth uh, club which uh, affiliates itself with VIU, so it's for youth players and uh, separate from the university teams. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Was it, was, okay, thank you. Sorry. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Under corporate services, the next item is 9A, under the alternative, uh, alternate approval process results. And the purpose is to provide council with the results of the alternative approval process and obtain council approval for adoption of the fire station number one borrowing bylaw 2018 number 7257. So for bylaw, Councillor Brennan. Um, Your Worship, this one is actually just to receive the results. So the bylaw comes later in the agenda. Pardon me, receive. Yeah, Thank so you. So this is just the um, Thank official you. results. Okay. Chair Mover. That council receive for information the results of the alternate approval process related to fire station number one borrowing bylaw 2018 number 7257. Moved and seconded. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Next item under 2018 strategic directions the Nanaimo Youth Advisory Committee is to be introduced by Mr. Bill Corson, Deputy Director of Community Development. Mr. Corson. Um, so tonight we're asking council endorse the three priorities of the Youth Advisory Council, which are a focus on youth poverty, uh, transportation, and event participation and organization. Thank Any you. Is someone that? prepared to move the mo So moved. Thank you. Councillor Hong, seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Armstrong. Any discussion? Discussion, excuse me. Seeing none, call the question. Those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is Cliff Street Contaminated Soils to be introduced by Mr. Bill Corson, Deputy Director, Director of Community Development. And the purpose is to respond to questions with regards to contaminated soils management asked by Council at the regular meeting held on December 5th, 2016. Mr. Uh, Your Worship, we're fortunate to have many bills in this organization and uh, another bill will be presenting this to you. Mr. Mr. Bill Sims, Sims yes. good evening. <laughs> You're on. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we also had a consultant that's due to call in on conference call in case there was any technical answers here. He was intending to be here this evening uh, to speak to the issue, but uh, got sort of wires crossed in Victoria. So we're expecting his call any moment. But in front of you, uh, as Council's aware, in December of 2016, there was uh, a motion that Council directed staff to provide some information on the... Uh, contaminated soils issue around the Cliff Street project. Mr. Rosen's here who has uh, a great deal of familiarity and as I say, we hope to be hearing from our consultant here shortly. Thank you. Is, uh, would somebody be prepared to move the recommendation? So moved. Moved by Councillor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Hong. Is there any discussion? Therefore, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out. Next one is the building bylaw amendment, and that is to be introduced by Mr. Bill Corson, Deputy Director of Community Development. Mr. Corson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so this is a, we're asking Council to amend uh, building bylaw 7224 on two fronts. Um, the first is to update, uh, again, compliance with the um, Provincial Building Code 
we have a clause in there right now that requires uh, buildings that are damaged by fire over 75% to be brought up to the full building code. And uh, we've been told by the province that uh, clause isn't consistent, so we're going to remove that one. And the other um, issue we have is a small typo where we've used, we have a sentence of criteria, set of criteria people are supposed to follow when we have a or, we have an and instead of an or. So we're going to change that out. So just really two housekeeping amendments for council. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Brennan, would you like to do first reading, please? Uh, building, by law. building Amendment Bylaw 2018, number 7224.01, to bring Building Bylaw 2016, number 7224, into conformance with the Building Act, pass first reading. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Councillor Hong. Thank you. Um, just for some clarification from staff. So. If I'm not mistaken, this is the by is this the bylaw point that allows or forces the city to either tear down a building beyond repair for 75 75 percent, or what what part is this one referring to that what we're removing? Um, again, this is not really my my area of specialty, but my understanding, speaking to Mr. Fox today, is this is where if a building is damaged beyond 75 percent. Um, we as a city have had this policy in place where we require people to then rebuild the structure to the current building code. Yes. And my understanding is under the new uh, provincial code, it's you actually, 75% is the number you use, you actually, uh, you make a discretionary call as to how badly the building's damaged. And um, if only half the building's damaged, we say that you only need to fix that half of the building. So we make a observation as to what needs to be fixed, as opposed to this mandatory 100%. So, if I'm not mistaken, the last time we used this this bylaw was the house on Nickel Street. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was the last time I remember this one. And we he wanted to fix it, and we said no. It's beyond 75%. You have to build it to building code. So now he can just. What, what what mechanism do we have now if we remove this? Yeah, so now we would go into the building and we would assess what needs to be done on a case-by-case -case basis and ask him to update whatever is damaged on the building. So then he doesn't have to build a current code, so he can build it to 1950 code if, if the house is 1950s. Whatever's damaged needs to be fixed. So if there's some trusses that are burned out, those need to be fixed. If the wiring is deficient in an area that was burned, that needs to be fixed. So again, that's to the code then or to current? Code now. To the, what's ever been damaged needs to be updated to the current code. If something was not damaged, it can stay in the, to the old system. Okay, so I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing yet. I haven't figured that out. If I could, uh, the, um, the previous bylaw, we can no longer use. So we have to change it. So this is the change to, to, uh, to get to where we need to go. Yeah, uh, yeah, again, I'm just trying to think if this is good or bad for the neighbors that are going to get stuck with a house in, 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 in decrepit condition if they don't want to fix it and we can't tear it down. Because I think under this one, we pretty much, as a derelict, derelict building, if they didn't do anything, th that person, hmm, I'm just still thinking about it. I know we can't do anything about it, but I'm just trying to understand this one a bit more. Thank Chief Fry. Uh, so to answer Councillor Hong, uh, under the community charter, uh, council uh, can be presented with a case if it's a public safety issue or if council makes that determination that there is a risk to the public. Uh, with a building in a state of disrepair, uh, for example, abandoned uh, residential homes, uh, similar to the one on Nickel Street, they can make a decision to have it demolished. Great, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fuller. <clears throat> yeah, I actually think this is a good thing because uh, many of the older homes in Nanaimo, uh, their assessed value is so low <laughs> that... Uh, if you were 75% over the assessed value, like some of the some of the sitting buildings are 
only worth like twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. So seventy-five percent of damage of that would be fifteen to uh, whatever, and if it was more than that, then you had to demolish. You had to build the whole thing up to code. So you, you didn't have to demolish, you had to build it up to code. So I think this is better and allows them just to, uh, at this point, take what needs to be done and do it, as opposed to having to do it all. Thank you. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Councilor Brennan. Yeah. <clears throat> that building amendment bylaw 2018 number 7224.01 passed second reading. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. And that bu building okay. amendment bylaw 2018 number 7224.01 passed third reading. Second. Moved and seconded by Councillor Thorpe. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. So the next item is 11A, cameras and taxi cabs, to be introduced by uh, Fire Chief uh, Fry, uh, Director of Public Safety. Excellent, thank you. Uh, this came as a recommendation originally out of the Public Safety Committee and uh, the Chief Superintendent, the RCMP, uh, requesting a bylaw on requiring uh, cameras and taxi cabs. Staff looked into it uh, and was in communication with the past Passenger Transportation Board, which is a provincially regulated agency. And, can't, and basically the city uh, can't supersede the requirements of the provincial regulation. Uh, the taxi cabs were spoken to uh, by staff. And while they, one did support it and say that they would uh, opt in to something like that, uh, but only if the other company did as well. So the other company said that they weren't prepared to spend that money uh, to implement uh, t uh, taxi rules or taxi cameras at this time. And it's really just in for information uh, for council. Thank you. We do have a delegation, Mr. Bill Manners. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Bill Manners from Nanaimo and I'm want to talk about taxi cameras in the city of Nanaimo. They make taxis safer for the drivers and the passengers. In 2008, the Passenger Transportation Board released an industry advisory recommending for driver safety that taxi camera programs in BC to improve the driver safety, help with police investigations when an incident occurs, and protect the privacy of passengers and the drivers. There's many other ways for the taxi companies and drivers to improve their safety. I'm not gonna go into them, but there's quite a few of them. WorkSafe BC advises the companies have a legal responsibility for workplace safety and must have policies, procedures, and engineering controls in place to reduce the risk of violence to drivers. I'm gonna take you back to August 23rd, 2011. This incident happened on Dumont Road. Two juveniles were arrested for robbing a taxi driver. Luckily, an elderly lady saw the driver of an AC taxi company car being robbed and called 911 on her cell phone and waited until police arrived. The cab driver told the police later that he picked up two male suspects and that he stopped to let them out at Pleasant Valley Community Center they pulled out knives and demanded his cash and cell phone. Then they ran southbound on the NN railroad tracks with his phone and an undisclosed amount of cash. Luckily, again, police contained the area the suspects were tracked down shortly with help from police handlers and their dogs, Lars and Sonny. The dogs also helped recover a knife and other items cast off by these suspects. The taxi driver now suffers from bouts of post-traumatic stress disorder and has recently been forced to give up his chauffeur's license after 43 years. That driver's me. Taxi cameras. Today, the reason that we're discussing this is because passenger danger. There's been 
problems inside taxi cabs that would have been captured by the camera. It goes to not just protecting the driver, but now it moves to protecting the passengers as well from any future problems. In most communities in BC, not most, in quite a few communities in BC, they've adopted the Taxi Bill of Rights. The Taxi Bill of Rights give rights for passengers, they give rights for drivers. To date, only one taxi company in Nanaimo has voluntarily adopted this Taxi Bill of Rights. And only one taxi company in Nanaimo wants to have cameras installed in their cars. My guess is they're probably the same one. I would like to see a report done by the city regarding taxis in our community, specializing in the rights and the safety of passengers and drivers. If anybody has a question, I'll try my best to answer. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. Yeah, just on that, would just that moment, not? Just a moment. Oh, sorry, Bill. Got to put this in so I can hear you. Okay. Would that not be better directed towards WorkSafe BC? No. Can you, ex and can the, you explain the, the, the your rationale? The reason why I would like the city to do it is we'll go back again to 2008, 2009, when this first came out. At that time, Marilyn Hutchinson was with the City of Nanaimo Economic Development Office. The Economic Development Office put together a program with both taxi companies to find ways of looking after driver and passenger safety. Sadly, the Economic Development Office switched and changed to it at, at arm's length. Mrs. Hutchinson was no longer with the city. I got robbed and everything stopped. Plans were in process to implement and approved by both companies at the time for the Taxi Bill of Rights and cameras, and now it's become more of a money issue, a cost factor for the taxis. Thank you, thank you very much. I see no further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is someone prepared to move the, mo the recommendation? I'll move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Thorpe. Uh, is there a second there? Seconded by Councillor Hong. Discussion, Councillor Hong. Um, thank you. A little disappointed, I guess, with the taxi industry. I think it, uh, the safety of their customers should come first. This, this kind of reminds me of what we did with Bar Watch and, and ID scanning. Uh, not all the bars brought on, you know, the idea of scanning IDs at once. Uh, a couple of us did, in hopes that others would join us eventually. And I think that if I were a passenger, and if there were only two cab, cab companies in town, and I had the option of going to A, one that had a camera for my safety, and B, the one that didn't, I'd be more inclined to go to the one that I know I would feel safer in. So when you talk about number of economics, and if this is a private corporation, and private companies that do this, to get one edge up on your customers, I put the cameras in, it, it's, it's an advantage over another. So my question to staff is, is, do we need both ones to join? Would, if one is interested, you know, what, we hap what happened with us with the ID scanning in the bars is we ended up getting a reduction in our one-time fee in our business license. You know, it's $1,100 as opposed to 165. I know it's a difference, but uh, I don't know what taxis pay, but is there some sort of program that we can do to get them to buy in. I guess if somebody can answer that one. I'm unsure as to uh, if they have an annual licensing fee. I'm going to guess it's probably a business license or a chauffeur's license probably going forward with the company. Uh, it could be a recommendation from council that potentially might receive a, a discounter on that. Um, so, Ms. Curry. Um, thank you, Worship. So there is an annual chauffeur's permit that um, is not unlike a business license that um, is required for these types of licenses. It is through our business licensing department, but the chauffeur's permits are um, um, also run through the RCMP as well. So 
we would have to check and see what the business bylaw, um, business licensing bylaw says as well. Um, I'm not sure if there's any type of incentives, but that is something that staff could look into and, and report back. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Armstrong. Um, thank you. Um, I do concur with uh, what Mr. Manor said, having worked in North Vancouver, where I believe it was under bylaw that they must have cameras. There's no bylaw, so they just did it voluntarily. Sorry. Um, I, I would like to examine it further because I think it, it's very valuable. I think, it, as, as stated, it's, it's about safety. It's not about catching bad guys. It's actually about safety for passengers and drivers. So I would like to see if we could maybe get, um, if there's a way that we could do some type of incentive, as, as Councillor Hong said, whether it be for chauffeur's permit or for business licenses for the uh, actual dispatch for the company, whatever, if, uh, if at all possible. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Curry? Oh, sorry. Okay. Councilor Fuller. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking on at uh, something called the BC Taxi Camera Rule. Um, it says effective May 31st, 2017, but then it says rescinded further down. So I haven't gone through the whole thing, uh, but I'm curious to know whether it has been rescinded because uh, it lists uh, some cities that actually do allow do have taxi cameras. Uh, Greater Vancouver has a mandatory tax camera program, Fraser Valley, Greater Victoria, Williams Lake has voluntary, Prince George has voluntary. So I followed up with each of those municipalities and with the pas passenger transportation board uh, that, that made these regulations and they've all opted in uh, the taxi companies opted in to that and registered as each individual ones. And there are no, looking uh, through all the municipalities that are listed, none of them actually have it written in a bylaw. Mm. Yeah, because I, I could see it being a huge safety issue. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff on uh, the news lately with regards to uh, cab drivers, Uber drivers, etc., being assaulted, robbed, and uh, cameras would go far away to, a long way to offer them some sense of protection. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. So I certainly appreciate the, the points that uh, the delegation made, and, and maybe this does, does deserve um, further, further examination, but um, as I am hearing things and reading the report, the bottom line right now is that um, it has to be voluntary and it has to come from the passenger transportation board and, and the city uh, does not have the right to, to impose that requirement. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it would be an expensive proposition. I think it might well be worthwhile, but I don't think it's something that uh, can be taken uh, and, and accomplished lightly. It's certainly um, something that may deserve further study. But I think for now all we can do is uh, accept the report and, and keep it in our radar for further discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think uh, Council needs to be reminded that this was a report to introduce a bylaw at the City of Nanaimo to force the operators to have cameras mounted. Staff have come back and told us we don't have jurisdiction. So if there's anyone, if there's anyone else wishing to speak to the motion that's on the floor, which is to receive this information, uh, I invite you to do so. So on the motion to receive this report, Councillor Brown. No, I don't want to talk about receiving the report. I, I was going to um, offer a motion about um, asking staff to give us a report on, on. Um, what incentives might be allowed. Okay, thank you. Councillor Armstrong. I was just actually going to say, I'm, I'm going to see if I can draft a motion to take it to the UBCM that perhaps the province can look at mandating it. Thank you. I was actually going to suggest something along those lines. However, the, the way the uh, order works, it would, be, uh, it would come to AVICC first, uh, come from the local association, and then on to UBCM if it's adopted by AVICC. But uh, that would certainly be a recommendation that we could uh, that we could uh, put forward for the next council. 
All right, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Any other motions coming of this item? Okay, thank you. Next one is under uh, 12A, and that is Fire Station Number One Borrowing Bylaw 2018 Number 7257. Councillor Brennan. I'm just now have to go back. I'm sorry, Your Worship. No, no worries. Just. One of the joys of going paperless. Yeah, no kidding. Sorry. It's not as easy as paper. Okay. Um, I move that uh, fire station number. Okay, fire station number one, borrowing bylaw 2018, number 7257, to authorize the borrowing of up to $17 million for the reconstruction of fire station number one be adopted. Thank, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. And there's, unless it's a question, there's no debate. Councillor Hong. Thank you. Um, are we going to be able to have, the question I have with regards to this is can we still look at options to put something above this, like affordable housing? Councillor, I'm reading. Councillor, that's not, uh, it's not for debate. And that's, uh, that's outside the uh, bylaw reading. It's for adoption only. Okay, I won't support it. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed. Show Councillor Hong and Councillor Fuller opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item is 16A. Shall we defer that? I, w I was going to say, um, Council, that it, it was um, Council's decision, so it sounds like motion that's... To okay, motion to defer. Seconded. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Under 17A, and that's a delegation. It's uh, Nicholas Heather to provide Council with a verbal presentation in support of the speculation and empty home tax. Is Nicholas Heather in the gallery? <coughs> Guess not. We move on to the next item. Delegation. With respect to uh, Deborah Hollins and Kahir La Laoshi, if I got that correct, I'm sorry, to provide a presentation regarding the community-based senior sector, the raising of the profile project of the Provincial Summit on Aging. Not in the gallery? Next one. Doug Bender to provide a verbal presentation regarding the noise of containers from Omni Foods. Uh, We're terribly sorry, but uh, you, you have to advise the clerk when you're signing up as a delegation with respect to the a presentation, you had a, a presentation, did you? A PowerPoint? Well, no, it's not a PowerPoint, it's just a short video of the noise. Is that allowed? Um, not if we didn't receive it beforehand. If we didn't receive it beforehand, we're not able to put any PowerPoint or any stick into our machine because we have to check it to make sure it's not corrupted and it's formatted properly. So. Anyways, my um, mayor and council. Uh, my name is Doug Bender of uh, 104 Esplanade in Nanaimo, uh, representing the 37 petitioners from the March 19th uh, Nanaimo Council meeting regarding uh, DVP 343. Um, and there's a, uh, regarding the container noise. There's also, um, it's just a follow-up actually of this application. There's a, I think I've Can I trouble you to pull the microphone closer okay. to your... Thank you. How's that? I think that's probably better. Okay. Um, there's also a link, I believe, for the, for the DVP plus the minutes from the meeting. Uh, at the March 19th Council meeting, a motion was carried unanimously 
to direct the applicant to implement a sound mitigation on their outside containers within 30 days. As council may remember, this issue was debated for, for over an hour. Uh, on eight, April the 16th, three days before the deadline that was imposed for the sound mitigation, there was no progress noted, so I visited a representative from the City of Nanaimo Planning Department uh, who is managing the this file. Uh, he reported that the city and the applicant were working closely together regarding the requirements which soon would be implemented. Uh, it was, uh, I was told that the mitigation would be completed on April 20th, uh, at the latest April 23rd. So on the, actually on May, the, uh, April 23rd, the day, deadline uh, just came and went and nothing was completed. On April the 27th and on May the 2nd, I again contacted the city planning department and was told they were just, they were working on it. On May the 8th, I talked with the owner of Green Plan who represents the applicant. He reported that he hoped that the work would be done uh, within 10 days or less. And then on May the 10th, he told me again that uh, this time it would probably be three work weeks or longer that this work would be. So as of today, we are almost one month past the date that the council set for the sound mitigation to be in place. We are being told that the implementation would be another 21 days or so. So in reality, we would be almost 60 days past your deadline. Uh, we just honestly believe that there may be no intention of following your decision. Uh, I would like to note that summer is here and we the petitioners would like to enjoy our yards and our patios and to open our windows at night without the constant noise which sounds actually like a lawnmower running 24 hours a day. We, we believe councillors should consider maybe uh, issuing a stop work on the containers until the applicant can prove that they have sound mitigation in place and can meet the city staff requirements. Otherwise, I just think this will go on and on. Um, anyways, thank you for your time, and if you have any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for the delegation? I see none, sir. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Hong. Um, thank you to you, to staff. I have a question with regards to this. Um, we got an update from Mr. Dave Stewart with regards to this project on April the 27th, and he says it was gonna be done. And now our present, um, Mr. Bender has said that it hasn't been done. So when can we actually have an answer? Are the permits in? Have they been issued? We're, what stages are we at with this? Yeah, thank you. So I checked with the building uh, permit staff today to seek an update for you. The, um, the siting permit was issued last week. That was one of the things that was holding up the, uh, the work. And uh, my understanding is our building inspectors are working with um, Herald Engineering on the uh, acoustical paneling that's gonna go around each of the containers. So they need to get the siting permit first. That was granted last week. I would hope that we would start seeing some progress uh, very soon. But when they came and presented to us, their architect had all this fancy stuff that they could use and, and get it done according that was their time frame so now they're hiring an outside engineer to to do it that wasn't expressed to us when when they came before us did they did how did that change from what he presented to us and in, in his acoustic material that he was going to use that could be easily put up to how we got here today I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hong, or Councillor Armstrong, pardon me. I concur with uh, Councillor Hong's comments. I mean, we bent over backwards to try and help the uh, business owner with this. We've had, uh, we do have nice weather coming up. It's very loud. I was by there myself and could hear it. So I think we need to, to do something about it. I don't think, I don't know how many more extensions we can give for, and he did say that he would be able to get it done faster than we were gonna give him the 60 days, I think, or whatever, the extra 30, and he said, no, he wouldn't need it. So I'm concerned that this is ongoing and that we need, I think we need to take some type of action. Thank you. Councillor Hong? 
Um, thank you, through to Seth, with another question with regards to the roof. What is the ETA on that one? Because that was supposed to be six to eight months that they were going to have it up. So are they going to have this ready before winter, or what's the plan? Uh, I believe that, that's the, still the goal. Yeah, they are working on the, the actual warehouse building itself. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Corson, uh, are, has, has this work been impeded by seeking permits that we would be issuing? Are you aware? Uh, I mean, all I know is that we issued the permit last week, so my guess would be it's taken us a while to get to the point where we could actually issue that siting permit that's been issued for the containers. Oh, I, I would hope at that point now that's been issued, we can start moving things forward a little quicker. Okay, thank you. Councillor Thorpe. Yes, thank you, Chair. I agree with the comments of uh, Councillor Armstrong, and I certainly sympathize with the concerns of the neighbors. We did give an extension, uh, and we were assured this work would be done, and it has not been done, and we cannot, in my opinion, just allow it to continue uh, indefinitely. So I guess I'm looking for advice from, from our staff, if Mr. Corson can give me some help in, in what steps we can take to ensure that this mitigation is completed in a timely manner, and if it's not going to be, then what options uh, does Council have to, uh, to uh, uh, deal with the concerns of the neighbours? I don't know if staff can answer that now or not, but I would appreciate an attempt. Uh, I think my, to be honest with you, Councillor Thorpe, my preference would be to sit down with staff tomorrow and I could send an email to Council with some options for you. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn mm -hmm. without their advice. Well, I appreciate that. I just don't want us to leave this and, and have it, as I said, go on indefinitely. So if, if you can take time to, to research what's happening and where we might go from here and inform Council, then uh, we can take it from there. Thank you. Thank you. So, next item. Delegation uh, from Mr. Ron Walker, past, past president of BC and Yukon Branch, the Kidney Foundation of Canada, to request that the City of Nanaimo pass a resolution in support of or the organ donor program in line with the resolution of the Union of BC Municipalities. Mr. Walker, always nice to see you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ron Walker. I live in Songbird Place and uh, Nanaimo and I'd like to warble for a few minutes in your ear. Uh, I, I have provided a copy of the background document for what I'd like to say, and I don't propose to read the document, just to highlight a few items from uh, the, the document. Um, and I want to start by reading to you the uh, resolution that was passed by the UBCM at its, count, at its at conference uh, in 2016. So it said, therefore, be it resolved that UBCM call upon mayors and council members to accept the Kidney Foundation's challenge to save lives through organ donation in their communities and to work with the foundation to increase the number of people registered as organ donors in their respective communities. Last year at their conference, uh, we set up a booth to, to do interviews of municipal legislators and they managed to do 70 tapings of various uh, municipal councillors, and some of those have already been played uh, through Shaw Cable on our plugged in uh, program. Uh, our purpose here tonight is to request that the City of Nanaimo pass a resolution in support of the organ donor program in line with the resolution of the UBCM. Uh, some, some salient points. The medical community in Canada, based on its experience, uh, estimates that one Canadian in 10 is living with chronic kidney disease, and most of them don't know it because there are no symptoms for this disease. That means as many as 9,000 of your friends and neighbours may be walking around the city uh, with kidney disease and don't understand that they have it. Um, and just to bring that really home, I counted 10 people sitting around the table. Which one of you, which one of you is that one in 10? 
The uh, success of the transplant program depends heavily upon deceased donors, and I talk about that in my, in my background report. In 2016, uh, the BC branch of the foundation commissioned a survey that showed that some 90% of BC residents approve of organ donation, but at the time of the survey, only about 18% had registered with the organ donor data bank. Surprisingly, some 51% of resident said, respondents said that they felt that they had registered with a sticker on their driver's license. You haven't been able to do that for 18 years. The only way to register as an organ, organ donor now is to register with BC Transplant, and it's like about, a, about maybe a three-minute operation on your computer. You can, you can go onto the BC, the BC uh, uh, branches site and they've got a big red button, just push the red button and they'll take you right through to the, to the, to the transplant registration. Uh, registration. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in response to the information revealed by the survey, the BCY branch understood, undertook to increase the number of registered donors by 50% over, 50, over five years, ending in 2021. That is to, remove, to, to increase the number of registered donors from 18% to around 30%. With the assistance of the BC service centers, who now routinely ask if you want to be a donor when you go in to renew your driver's license, the number of registered donors has been increased to approximately 25% of the, the BC population, but we're only about halfway to our goal of 30%. Our request tonight is to the City of Nanaimo to join us in providing education to our citizens about this problem. We would like to discuss with the City how we might partner in moving towards our goal in Nanaimo. Tonight's request is a first step in the process and we respectfully request your positive consideration and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Councillor Fuller. <clears throat> Thanks for your presentation and organ doning, donating is uh, huge. We need it uh, across Canada, not just in BC. Would it be helpful if we were to put a link to the registration form on our website and Facebook pages? Any kind of thing that gets to the public is good. Yeah. So that's something I believe our IT department could look at, uh, at doing. Thank you. I see no further questions. Thank you. Always a very important subject. Oh, Councillor Brennan. No, it's not a question. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Councillor Brennan. Yeah, I'm wondering if this issue um, in the, um, the notion of partnering with the city and um, trying to, to figure out um, the process that we might use, if this um, issue could be um, referred to the Community Vitality Committee Councillor Fuller chairs that night. I don't know whether that would fit your agenda or not, but it seems like the appropriate place for this discussion to take place with the with the kidney organization. So I will, I will make that motion. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Councillor Hong. Thank you. Um, yeah, I will support the motion. I think it is a good idea. Any way of getting the information out, I think, helps especially if we're out at events. And I notice that some of our garbage trucks don't even have any advertising signage on them. They're moving billboards and we don't take advantage of it. So I think having nonprofit organizations, having some of the advertising on some of these um, city facilities would be helpful and it would get the word out. So I'll support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fuller. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, but hopefully it wouldn't preclude the possibility of putting the registration form up on our website and Facebook pages, and then we could look at other means of getting the word out as well. Thank you. Councillor Brennan. I think that that's an issue that um, really should be referred to the committee and discussed the, the whole um, way that we would respond to this. In the past, our IT department um, has suggested that um, putting uh, links on our website to specific um, organizations is maybe not the, the, the best um, thing to, to do in terms of our website is fairly specific. Um, so I think I'm not saying we should not do that. I'm saying before we make a decision to do that, 
we go to our community vitality committee, someone from IT could be invited. There could be um, a full-scale discussion about the ways that the city might be able to respond to this request. Thank you. Ms. Gurry. Thank you, Worship. I was just basically going to um, respond the same way Councillor Brennan has. Um, I know in the past there's been issues around HR and IT with sponsoring certain types of different organizations on our website. So um, I'm not the expert in that, but I would actually, I would just hope that Council would allow us to look into that and make sure it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. So, I was tardy tonight. Oh, didn't seem to matter. With respect to the in, informing everyone to have, make sure they sign up for question period. So, the first one is uh, Mr. Bill Manners under meeting procedure. What is the current status of the up forthcoming updated? procedure by law. At the beginning of the meeting, you give the statement that you read and the procedures that we as presenters, we as guests are supposed to follow. Uh, I understand there's going to be an update. Is that forthcoming or? Well, the, the challenge that we have here right now, sir, is that this is not an agenda item and question period is for agenda items only. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It relates to the item that I discussed. For example, in my pocket, I had a PowerPoint presentation. Sorry, Gord. There was also another gentleman here with a PowerPoint presentation, and we were told that we could not bring him to the meeting. If that, that would probably be part of the upcoming procedure bylaw, and that's why I'm asking. No, sir. It's, the procedure bylaw was not on the agenda tonight. Okay. Thank you. Miss Gurry, you seem anxious. <laughs> Thank you, Worship. I just actually do want to respond to that because um, we have many delegations that sign up. So when they actually do sign up to be um, up on the agenda, so not as a late delegation as Mr. Manners did tonight, but when they sign up ahead of time, we inform them that if they have presentation material, we need that ahead of time. And the reason we need that ahead of time is so that we can ensure that it doesn't corrupt our system, that the content isn't um, something that shouldn't be displayed, and also that the formatting is proper. So if they sign up on time and we know about it, they are informed of that. So, so all delegations get um, communication back and forth with our department, and we let them know to provide their presentation material ahead of time. If they show up at a meeting as a late delegation, we have recently let council know that we can't let IT put it in the system. IT has informed us that they cannot put a stick or a drive in the system for those reasons I just noted. Oh, thank you very much. I hope that helps, Mr. Mr. Manners. Yep. Okay, next one is Mr. Pat McGee. The first question is with, with respect to uh, I don't see the agenda item, sir. It, uh, Pat McGee, uh, Nanaimo. Uh, What's the agenda item that you're you're, you're speaking uh, about? K. Uh, hold on a second. I got to get my breath here. Uh, eight uh, administ administration. Eight. Uh, I guess it'd be one on the audit. KPMG summary of audit findings. I don't, I don't see that. Where is that now? Eight two under the finance and audit committee recommendations. Right. Yes, sir. My question is, there was quite a bit of topic in there about uh, education for counselors. And I was wondering, will that be with this council, will that education come in or will it be for the next elected council? Are we talking about the KPMG uh, audit. audit or the letter? The under the financial statements? Um, I believe he's probably talking about the letter under the letter. financial statements. So, and probably to the um, Councillor Thorpe's motion that staff work with KPMG auditors mm -hmm. to implement the recommendations. So, I think he's talking to that recommendation. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, do we have a. 
Do we have a, uh, an answer for the, for the gentleman, Councillor Armstrong? Thank you, Mr. McGee. I can tell you what I did was that I spent four hours with, with a member of finance prior to the budget even coming up to learn the process and understand it. So, and I believe in speaking with them, that's something they want to offer right. coming into the new councillors. The reason I did that, I was a brand new councillor. I didn't get all the opportunities that others did. So I do believe that is in, in the works that, that uh, our finance and audit staff will be prepared to assist any new councillors or even previous councillors with that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Should I ask my second question? Councillor Hong. I can answer that one too. And I think um, if you're speaking to 8B2, those were recommendations um, for best practices. So that's financial talk. I don't think wherever, unless an elected councillor is a CPA of some sort that's gonna understand financial statements, I don't think this is supposed to teach counselors um, with regards to how to read financial statements. It was just the best practices of, of accounting is, is what um, Councillor Thorpe's motion is towards, right? For reporting best practices. Thank you, Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, if I may chair and to the, uh, to the delegation, um, the intent of my motion was that staff work with KPMG auditors to correct deficiencies in our processes which had been identified and, and uh, work towards be best practices and then have staff share those uh, findings and results back with council so that we can learn what corrections were made to improve our, our um, auditing processes. So it would be an education for council and I am hoping that that will happen as soon as possible uh, hopefully so this council can take advantage of that knowledge and certainly uh, for future councils as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And you had another question. This one here is directed to you, Your Honor. Uh, the presentation by the grade five class, I thought it was exceptional and it was good to see young people here. And uh, the question you asked on smoking, what they thought of smoking, and I would like to ask the same question, Your Honor, are you going to set the example? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was about littering. And I will tell you no, that it while smoking, I am... It was about smoking as well. <laughs> <laughs> while, while I may be considered still to be codependent, I am not a litterer. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All those in favor, opposed. We're adjourned. <laughs>